today's session is on the topic 10x SEO, my secret sauce to number one ranking on Google. And for leading this session, we have Siddharth Lal, Managing Director, Director Bruce K India. He is actually passionate about digital marketing, especially search marketing. Siddharth has been named as the one of the top 100 digital marketers 2017 on plural site Digi 100 list by Paul Ryder. He's also an advisor and mentor on the TV series Unicorns, Startups of the Internet by NDTV Profit Prime between November 2015 to 2016. In February 2014, he, he, CMO Asia presented Siddharth Lal with the most talented social media professional in India award at the sixth edition of the Global Youth Marketing Forum. Siddharth is a speaker at various industry SEO forums such as DMAI Masterclass Instructor, Young Entrepreneurs Academy at Tech New Delhi and many more. Prior to relocating in India, Siddharth was a successful entrepreneur. His company was a top sales partner for leading teleco in Australia. With internet marketing knowledge and SEO skills, Siddharth led his company to cross over $15 million in online sales for their channel partners. So welcome Siddharth, over to you. Um, let's take it forward. Okay, thank you so much Divya. Um, and uh, welcome audience. Uh, I believe there's a huge number of registrations. Uh, Divya mentioned nearly 700 of them. Um, and pro when I last checked with her, there was over 100 people already online. That was just before the session started. Uh, I'm looking forward to an exciting session with you guys. Uh, we have a very short amount of time, okay. but let's do yeah. our best Is to make sure. Is it the last session again? Um, we do have some technical interference coming through from somewhere, but I'm sure that'll be. Okay, perfect. All right, so um, 10x SEO, my secret sauce. Let's get started. Um, so what we'll do is I'll just give a little bit of introduction about our company, which is Bruce Clay, uh, which is where I work. So we were founded in 1996, and uh, Bruce uh, founded this company in uh, Silicon Valley. Uh, we've got offices in US, Europe, Asia, Middle East, India, and uh, we have won many awards and. Uh, you know, Bruce is also known as father of SEO. So in fact, if you went on your uh, computers right now and you typed in father of SEO, you will be able to see um, Bruce Clay as the company there. Uh, we've also written uh, a definitive guide on SEO, which is uh, search engine optimization for dummies. Um, it's about an 800 page manual, roughly, uh, give or take a few uh, pages. Um, so if you can imagine that's 800 pages. So there's lots and lots and lots of learnings in SEO. We also have our blog, which you guys can follow. Um, since Divya has already given my introduction, uh, I'm not going to go through uh, stuff about m myself. So let's get started. Um, uh, Divya, I believe you have a poll that you wanted to quickly conduct about the kind of audience we have over here. Could you do that for me now? Sure, I will. So uh, while you're doing the poll, can I still continue or? Uh, uh, do, do we I wait for the poll? The poll uh, it's regarding people. If you have ever been a part of SEO and are taking care of SEO activities on your in your organization, just fill in a yes in the poll. And if you haven't, just fill in a no. So we'll give around forty seconds for this particular poll. Okay. So yeah. while they're doing that, should we continue or wait? Sure, we can actually uh, close it down. We have already got around 95 percent people votes. Great. Let's so move to the next question. Out. You have a second poll as well, don't you? Yes, I do. So Let's I'll just launch that. out the poll for this particular result. And here are the results. Around 61 percent of the people actually uh, attendees have actually been taking part in SEO activities at their organization while around 39% okay. are not taking care, uh, uh, part in their SEO activities of the organization. Okay, fair enough. And, and the next one. Moving forward, we have, this one is particularly for the people who have actually taken up SEO in their organization regarding how much experience do they have in SEO industry. 
so people just so that we understand like what kind of audience we have so what we know is about 40 percent of the people attending uh you know don't know too much about seo uh, since they've not really been taking care of seo in their within their organization and for the ones that do so the 60 percent who are taking care of seo uh let's get a feel of how much experience do they really have because um you know to be a good seo requires years and years of practice um, so let's see. Uh, I think the poll should be nearly done by now. And the results are in. Wow. Yes. 80% so of have... them have less than two years of experience. So, uh, guys, there's very, very few people out here in this audience that, uh, you know, will has practiced uh, SEO for, you know, two to five years or more. Um, so I will try to keep this slightly more basic and um, I'll try to throw in one or two advanced uh, search topics in between but most of it i'll try to keep basic all right so moving ahead um you know seo is uh, very important because search at the end of the day everyone does it um whether you want to buy a car a house uh, go to the movies try you know set up your travel plans etc your search starts at google so you go to google and uh, you know you start your search so search is everywhere so having your website ranking on the Google search engine becomes very, very important. Um, and the other thing we know, Google is constantly growing as well. Just in the last one year, uh, Google's paid market share, which is uh, where they get their revenue from, uh, they quoted they have increased that by 20%. So assuming that uh, organic and paid go hand in hand because that's where they make their money from. So 20% uh, increase in organic has also taken place. Um, in the US, 94% of all consumers uh, start their research online. So uh, moving to the next slide. Um, so some statistics around SEO. 93% um, of your people uh, who are searching for your products, services, or yours, your website, will not go to page two. That means they'll all go only to page one. 55% um, of nearly all queries are long tail, which is four words or more. And 87% of all clicks are organic. So, you know, organic versus paid search, 87% of all clicks are in the organic area. So uh, this means that page one is extremely important because if you're on page two, pretty much no one's going to find you over there. And page three, forget it. Um, in fact, uh, the joke in the SEO industry is if the best way to hide the dead body is on page uh, three of Google. There you go. All right. Uh, like I said, SEO is actually a rocket science is what I believe because there is so much to be learned uh, within this space. Uh, Google has come out and said that they have clear about 300 main variables in their algorithm. And within these 300 variables, they have got 10,000 sub variables as well. Um, there are three main parts of SEO, which is the technical, the creative, um, the on-page kind of stuff, content, et cetera. So, so you need to be both creative as well as you need to be uh, knowing the technical side of things as well. Um, and Google is constantly updating SEO. So their, their algorithm, they're constantly updating it. The statistic they have already thrown out is it used to be 550 changes a year. It's now gone up to 800 changes a year. So that's, uh, if you think about it, that's three to four changes uh, a day, uh, every working day. It's evolutionary. Um, it, used, uh, it used to be the page rank, uh, which was the driving fa factor of the algorithm. It's moved on to humming, uh, Hummingbird, and um, now Rank Brain is also part of it. They've introduced lots and lots of penalties, like there's the Panda penalty, there's a the Penguin penalty, there is a Pigeon, Pirate, Page Layout, and many, many more. So. So SEO is fairly complex. Now, having said SEO is fairly complex, I also want to reverse and go back and take a step and say that at the end of the day, SEO is about three things, right? That's what it is. On the fundamental level, there's only three things you need to really worry about in SEO. And that's not changed in the past two decades that Google has been around. So uh, content, you need to have high quality content, um, keywords are important, uh, but you know, it's the content. The content has to be user friendly. Um, the architecture of your website, you know, uh, can Google access your website? Can users access your website? Um, the pages are interrelated, et cetera. 
Um, that's your second uh, foundation pillar. And finally, links. Uh, you know, links are like words. So how people are linking to your website. Uh, and nowadays, uh, we talk about brand mentions as well. Um, and then overriding around all of this is you must have Google Analytics or some kind of analytics tool which tells you about how many people are coming to your site, where are they going, et cetera, et cetera. So on the foundation level, that's what SEO is all about. Um, moving on, a statistic is position one on search results. Uh, that is the number one on, uh, on Google can give you 17x more traffic than position 10. Therefore, what we know is website ranking matters. So I'm going to take you through a graph of how uh, positions like each position pay, uh, on page one. So on page one of Google, where you see the search results, there is uh, position one to, one to 10. So position one, the statistic is gets about 35% uh, of all clicks. Um, you're seeing two graphs out there. One is a bar chart and one is a line chart. Just to clarify, the bar chart is what is the desktop rankings and the uh, line chart is the mobile rankings. So just don't get confused between the two. So 35% uh, of all desktop clicks go to position one. And then it drops down to 10%, roughly 9.2 to be precise. And then 3.9 and so on down till about 2%, 2.8% uh, on position 10. So uh, as you can see, Getting to position one is very, uh, or rather first, getting into the first page of Google is very important because page two and page three is where people hide dead bodies. But page one, within page one, what we have is position one, two, three are fairly, fairly important. Um, so what's going to happen? Uh, I look at SEO as a race. You know, it's very dynamic, it's constant. Um, what's going to happen if you are if you're going to get to first of all if you are at position three or four or five You're going to want to try your best to overtake the riders in front of you in this case It's a cycle race, but in the case of uh, Google rankings um, If you think of your website uh, as you're the number three rider Then you want to come to the number two and then you want to come to number one But what's going to happen is it's a constant race SEO never stops Why because if you do overtake number two or number one and become number one then the riders who have just who you have just overtaken they will do everything to get that spot back because they want all that free traffic so seo is always going to be evolving constantly changing um, what i want to also talk about is seo is you know uh, a lot of people think technical etc and they get lost uh, a lot of marketing managers uh, entrepreneurs etc do not pay as much attention because they think paid search is easy, you can see everything, and it's fairly. But in reality, SEO for me is brand building. If you're not participating in search engine optimization, if you're not there in the organic search side of things, then you're doing your brand a disfavor because your brand is not going to be there when people are searching for you. So um, I call them brand moments. So let's have a look. So. Imagine you've just gone to, uh, uh, to Google and you type in, uh, say, cloud hosting in this particular case, and you see all these results. Now, first of all, if you're not there on page one of Google, then your brand is not there and it will not come into the consideration set of your users, right? So first thing is you need to get there. Now, Gary Ilias, um, this is the guy who, who I put the tweet for, uh, and you must follow him. He is Google's uh, spokesperson for organic search um, and he tweets regularly and in his tweet he has clearly said as you can read over there that uh, you know a great title and meta description is very important uh, for your users right um, so and and I will bring this up uh, in a little bit as well so the title tag is the most important tag for me in SEO so every page must have a title now, what is the title? The title is the blue link that you're seeing on the page in front of you uh, when you do a search. That is the title. So now, what are some of the secrets to writing a great title? So first of all, uh, the title tag should be about 12 odd words. Um, because if you don't uh, use the 12 odd words, you're, you're not using the full real estate. As you can see in that 
first result, they're just saying what is cloud hosting in Interroot. Uh, and, uh, you know, they have not taken advantage of the full length that's available to them, and that's real estate that's going wasted. Um, secondly, you must use your most important uh, theme of the page, the keyword that is important for that page. It must be used towards the beginning of the tag. That's going to be very important, right? So uh, you want to front load the tag, and you might also want to use your brand name, but use the brand name towards the end. And finally, you want to make sure that the title is click worthy, right? Because if the title is written well and it's cl click worthy, that means you're not just stuffing it with keywords. That's going to help you improve your CTR because the human eye will get uh, will uh, catch uh, the attention, uh, you know, based on the title. So as you can see in the red highlighted box. Um, those people, uh, which is in this particular case is HostGator, they seem to have used uh, in the title uh, new numbers, 2x faster, 4x scalable, and that immediately sets them apart from all the other uh, title tags that are being used on that page, and there's a higher chance that someone will click on their result rather than even the number three or number two, which is above them. So um, title tags are going to be fairly important. Now. People search online in various ways, right? Um, someone could be like, if you're if you're about TV series or TV television, etc. Someone could be searching for Tamil TV serials. Someone else could be using a genre based saying comedy TV series. Um, someone else might use an actor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to very quickly show you how you can look at keywords from your title tag. So I'm just going to do a very quick exercise. And also, by the way, if you guys can, if you want your website to be used in one of my examples, when I'm doing some searches or doing uh, other stuff where I might give some advice in it as well, uh, I would request that you uh, put it in your comments and I'll try to pull up uh, uh, whenever I'm doing an example, I'll try to use uh, one of the live examples. All right. so. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Google and I'm going to show you how you would do some keyword research in this case. So let's say um, we were looking at, uh, say, boots, uh, as in shoes, right? So I'll type in shoes. And as you see, as I type in shoes, Google immediately starts giving results, uh, as in uh, prompts you. So what you're seeing is what's called Google Instant. So if you see, it say, starts saying shoes for girls, shoes online, shoes for boys. So these are keywords that, or these are actual search queries people have done uh, recently in their search. And Google is showing this to you. So you can use this when you're doing some keyword research. So I could then maybe click on shoes online, right? Instantly, I'll get some results. I'll scan these results and I'll see what are the other search terms being used. So Associated uh, search terms, as I can see, are people saying buy shoes for men, men's shoes, etc. But also, if you scroll to the bottom of the page, you will see related search, the related searches, such as uh, shoes Flipkart, shoes for men Nike, shoes for men casual. So that starts giving me other ideas in terms of what are the content can, can be formed around shoes. There's another tool that I love using. It's called Sovel. And what it does is it instantly gives me searches from many different types of websites. So let, let me show this to you. So the tool name is called Sowell. And as I type in shoes, do you see what happens? It, the, so take note of the tool. It's called Sowell. It's completely free, people. And it's gone and it's queried Wikipedia. And it's saying on Wikipedia, people are searching for things like shoes, shoe size, shoe shiner etc on google people are searching for things like shoes near me shoes for women um, in amazon people are looking at adidas shoes nike shoes on yahoo people are looking at zappos clock shoes etc so bing is showing shoes online shoes india uh, shoe sale and even youtube shoe collection so it, it's an amazing tool it gives you a lot uh, a lot of uh, uh, thoughts on what can be put into your keyword research. So uh, this is a tool that I would rec highly recommend in your, whenever you're doing keyword research. And another tool is your Google AdWords Planner, uh, Google Keyword Planner. 
Um, so that's another one that I use. It gives you ideas in terms of how many searches are being done, etc. Okay. So back to our presentation. And I'll get a little bit into image images. Uh, images are also very, very important. And some of the main rules, there are basically there's only four rules to image optimization. It's fairly simple. One, you must use what's called an image alt attribute, which is essentially when there's a blind person and they are accessing the internet um, so that they are able to see what that image is about, the screen reader will read out what that image is about. So there's an Im alt attribute tag that must be used within an image, and that's where you specify what that image is about. The second thing you need to do is you need to make your file name keyword rich to specify what that image is about. And I'll show you a practical example as well. Um, third thing is the size of the image. This is where a lot of uh, website owners get left out because what they tend to do is the camera might give them a picture which is 4 MB. Um, for, that's 4 megabytes in size. And they just upload that to their website. Um, that makes their website very, very slow. So you need to optimize the size of that image. There are lots of tools available that will help you do that online. And you, you want to put a reduced size image. Uh, say something like if it's a big, fairly big image, you might want to uh, keep it at about 100 or 200 KB. And if it's a small thumb sized, uh, thumb -sized uh, image, then you might want to keep it down to 10 or 20 KB. Uh, so, but yeah, make sure it does not blur out, et cetera. And finally, uh, what helps with image optimization also is what is the content which is there near that image? So you want to place your image at the right spot. So very quickly, let me show you a practical example for this as well. All right. So I'm going into, this is our blog, the Bruce Clay blog. And here is an image that we have used. So if you notice um, this image where the girl is typing on the laptop, and if I right click it, and I click save image as, and I save the image, which I've already done. So I'll just open that up for you now. And as you can see, um, the image uh, which I've just opened, the file name is girl typing on a MacBook Pro close up, uh, pick jumbo, and the size of the image is 86 KB. So the image is optimized and the file name is also optimized. Now I'll also show you um, the alt attribute. So what you can do again, if you're in Google Chrome, you can right click this image and click on inspect element. And you see the blue part which has come up on my screen and where my mouse is, it says alt alt equals girl typing on MacBook. So that's your alt attribute there. So you've got the alt attribute, you've got image dimensions happening over here, which is also important. Um, so you've got alt attribute, image dimensions, you've got the name of the image, which is there, which is uh, typing on a MacBook Pro close up jumbo.jpg. Um, and the image has been used very well. And it's optimized in terms of size as well. So that's image optimization. If you do that well, um, you know, that's going to help you uh, with your website uh, speed, etc. as well. Um, so back into the presentation, speed. So see, since we were talking about speed, guys, speed is a ranking factor on Google. Google has said that uh, publicly. Um, but more important than that, what I consider is that speed impacts your conversions. Think about it. If your website does not load up in time or it's much slower than the other websites out there, people are not going to come back to your website. In fact, Google research shows that 53% of mobile sites will be abandoned if the website takes more than three seconds to load. Um, and another statistic that Google has published uh, is 79% of all visitors to a website, if they find that the website is slow, they will not come back and purchase from that website again. Having said that, Amazon has published some research which says the a page speed slowdown of just one second 
will cost them 1.6 billion dollars in sales right um and firefox has said a 2.2 second improvement in page speed leads to a 15 percent increase in conversion so guys you have it there speed is very very important make sure your website performs well um, one of the key things you can do for that is uh, obviously image optimization um, and compress your images uh, and another, another one that you can do is make sure your server responds very quickly when a query is made so make sure you're not on a slow server it instantly responds moving ahead i know i'm going at a fairly fast clip right at this point of time i'm thinking speed um, so let's move on uh, site architecture is another part of search engine optimization that is very important a site needs to be architected well they um, you know you cannot have every page linking to every page it makes a jumbled mess you need a neat site um, it should be layered a tree-like structure if you think about it proper directories at each level and that's how a website should be themed and set up, set about so your url structures are clean very very important from a site architecture perspective um, so let's have a look at some guidelines as well so the, there should be uh, links linking each part of the website to another part of the website otherwise your pages will be what's called orphan pages because google or the other search engine will never be able to find that page or even for that matter user will not be able to find that page um, you can add a sitemap uh, what's uh, called an XML sitemap can be added uh, to the uh, server and what that does is it tells Google where all the pages within the website are located um, and you can do what's called a HTML sitemap which is where users who if they are lost they can go in and quickly have a look at what are all the different types of pages that are there now what I'm also going to show you is we have a tool which shows a lot of the things that we've been talking about. And I want to quickly show you that. So, um, and I'll also try to see, so let's see, there we are. Okay. So what I've done is I've taken a website, it's called ibef.org, and I've run it on the tool. And what this then does is it gives us some information that we were wanting to look at. So it's showing us the title tag, which is business opportunities in India. So how do I, I'll try to correlate this for you. So if I open up ibf.org over here in the actual browser, and I right click and open up the source, which is the source code. So this is for the 40% of people, you know, who are uh, very new to SEO. This is how you would right click and open up uh, the web page or do a view page source. And as you can see, a whole lot of code opens up. Now, this makes it really hard for me to look at the title, the description, the headings, etc. right? So uh, we have a tool and uh, uh, we use this to look at the title. And as you can see, it clearly shows the title. It clearly shows the description, uh, keywords, tags, and other tags, etc. as well. Heading, heading is another important tag that's fairly important. So as you can see, there's a heading tag which says India pushing the right levers. And that's an H1 tag. So the heading tags are also in the H1, H2, H3, et cetera. Okay. Um, and H1 is the most important tag to be used. There should generally only be one heading tag on a page. Um, and now talking about the site architecture, let's talk about the number of links. So as we can see on this page, there is 212 links, which is this number over here. So this is the number of links which is on the website from the menu, from the top navigation, from various parts of the home page, even the footer. And these are all the links that are going to other parts of the website or to external websites. So as I said, there was about 212 links going out. And um, you, know, you need to see what kind of website do you have and does it really need 200 links? Um, uh, so at one point of uh, time, this particular website had four, 500 links and we have culled them down because we only wanted to take them to the major parts of the website. This is very, very important because all the links that are coming into a website, which create what's called a link juice, we need to spread that evenly within the website so that uh, other pages of the website also get this. Um, so that's where 
the from a site architecture perspective um, the link juice matters um, now if i click on indian economy as you can see it's opened up an economy and you can see the url that's been formed it's indian economy over there um, if i go into industry and i click on industry as you can see the directory that's been formed is ibf.org slash industry and within that if i click on automobiles you can again see a structured url is in process so it's now within industry it's the indian automobiles so that's exactly what i'm talking about a themed architecture to your website you must have proper directories and subdirectories um, and this is very important both from a user perspective, which is me as a user, if I come to Google and I want to look at what, what the page is about, I see a URL and I instantly know what it is about. So it will certainly help me in conversions. But apart from that, it's also important from a SEO or rather uh, Google search engine perspective as well. Now, moving into a topic that people love, which is links. So, <sighs> Let's go into the links part of it. Now, links are the third major part of ranking. So one part I covered was your um, the website architecture. The second part was the content in terms of titles, descriptions, on-page SEO, et cetera, what's, what's there on the page. Um, and another part is the links itself. So um, links are also fairly important. but you must never ever go out and start buying links. If you buy links, that's actually against Google guidelines and you can be penalized. Um, and I know a lot of people will say, how will Google know that I'm buying links? I get asked this question all the time, but trust me, Google comes to know that you're buying links. And when it comes to know, it can penalize your site and you, you will be gone. Um, you could be a big brand and they won't care. And I've seen that happen many, many times. So, you must earn your links. So let me talk a little bit more about it. So as you can see in this thing, you might think that, okay, I'll what's called a link farm where you might link from A to B and then have B link to C and C links to D and then D links back to you. Uh, and you might think, hey, this way Google will not come to know about the link, but trust me, they will be able to find that out, right? So. It, rather than doing that and and the other thing is the quality of the links right if uh, if it's a high quality link that's when you want it um, and the other one now very importantly is the theme um, if if you are a doctor then other doctors should be linking to you you know other medical companies should be linking to you medical device companies should be linking to you um, if a totally unrelated site is linking to you that link does not hold as much value at all, right? Um, second part is the quality of the link itself. So that was the theme of the link. The other part is the quality of the link, which is the quality of the website, right? The If the site is good, when I say a good site, I mean like, you know, it's being regularly updated. It's got good aesthetics. The content is fantastic. Uh, there are a lot of people who visit that website and therefore that audience makes sense for you. That's a good high quality website. and Make, getting a link from there is absolutely helpful. Um, another part is a lot of people think social media affects SEO. Uh, guys, uh, there's nothing more further from the truth in terms of a direct impact on rankings. Social media plays no role from a direct impact, right? So, in fact, um, you know, all those, uh, if you put links uh, in your social media sites uh, where people are posting links, Google does not really see them because they are behind a firewall um, and they are behind uh, usernames and passwords. Now, many, many years ago, yes, Google had started taking them into account, but then Google had a fallout with Twitter. And as a result, Twitter stopped Google's ability to see their links. And this disturbed the Google algorithm. So from that, from that point onwards, Google decided that social media links cannot impact the rankings because they are then dependent on a third party, which is a Facebook or a Twitter, and they do not want to be dependent on them to improve or uh, improve their algorithm. So guys, social media plays no impact in terms of direct rankings on Google. However, 
having said that do i believe social media is important absolutely yes right social media is critical for amplifying your content if you have created great content you must go there and put it on your social channels um, even if you can get an influencer to talk about your content, that's even better, right? You must, if you do all of these things, you can get natural links. That is, someone else will see this and they'll go back and write about you, blog about you, etc. Right? So that's how I see social playing into search. Now, another big way I view links is I don't think of links as ranking. I rather think of links as traffic. So my criteria for getting a link is not, uh, hey, I'm doing this for my SEO. I am doing this for my brand. That is, if I believe that my brand deserves to be on a third party website, then absolutely I want it to be there. And why would I not want it to be there? If my audience is over there, then I want my brand to be there. So the way I look at it, link building is not about Google. I talk about it as brand building and it's about relevant traffic. And very, very importantly, I want to de-risk my website from Google, right? Because if tomorrow something happened and Google devalued my site, I will lose all my traffic. Um, and I know of websites that have been totally dependent on Google and boom, when Google devalues their uh, website on Google, they are gone. Uh, overnight people become unemployed. So I would say, you know, while great, you want to get on top of organic search ranking, but simultaneously, Play your game where you will also be uh, getting traffic from other third party websites. And that's how I look at it. So what could you do? Well, some of the things like, for example, you could be a thought leader and you could come as I have come on this on digital video as an example. I'm here. This is at the end of the day. This is a link for me. Um, this is my brand name, Bruce Clay India going out there in the relevant crowd. So that's what I'm talking about. Um, do thought leadership. Uh, you could participate in industry forums, right? Uh, you could create a training program. And again, depending on your industry, you have to see what makes sense for you. Go and write a blog. Write that blog on your own website, not on third party websites. Write your own blog, publish regularly, and publish fantastic content. The content must be 10x content, and I'm going to come into that very shortly. Um, you know, you can do so many different things, sponsorships, uh, you know, uh, participate in local programs, um, uh, sponsor events within your industry. So there's so many things that you can do to get a link. Uh, you could also be in places where uh, you could register yourself on uh, sites like uh, Just Dial, et cetera, where um, people are coming and looking for your company details. Um, Quora is another place where people, and LinkedIn, are places where people will want to find out more information for certain businesses. So you might, you might want to participate uh, in those places. Um, I wanted to cover uh, non-ethical link building and what happens, but you know, just look at this slide and take down these names and go back and go to Google and search for overstock penalty, deck or my eyes penalty, etc. And these are great case studies, even JC Penny. Uh, please go and check them out. So just go to Google and type in JCPenney and Google penalty and decor my eyes and Google penalty and overstock and Google penalty. And these are fantastic stories for you guys to read. They're covered on New York Times, etc. big, big brands and how Google penalized them for doing bad, bad link building practices um, and learn from that. Right. Now, um, just a little bit more around content, guys. I I see brands, I see smaller players, everyone is wanting to jump on the content bandwagon, right? Everyone's talking about just, let's just create lots of content. But look at this graph. And this is, by the way, a couple of years old. And even at that point of time, what it's showing is in 60 seconds, um, there's about 300 hours of YouTube video being created. 300 hours in 60 seconds. Um, you do the maths and you'll see that it works out to some mind boggling number of millions of hours worth of YouTube being created every every year. Similarly, if you take WordPress posts, um, there's about 1400 WordPress posts being created every 60 seconds. So again, you do the maths and you'll come to some mind boggling number that, hey, 
there's about 3 million or 5 million uh, blogs being created uh, every month or year. So just think about the amount of content being generated. Do you really want to just add another page onto the internet which doesn't deserve to be there? If you are doing content, let's make it 10x content, right? Which is the content should be super well researched. It should really be something that users are looking for, right? Add some fantastic images to it. Maybe you can go and create a video, right? So you have to go and think out of the box. You have to see what is it that people are searching for and then come back and create content that they will really want to see, right? Um, so that's how you must go get into content. Um, now I'm also going to very, uh, and from an ethics perspective, guys, um, you know, what is your URL worth to you, right? If you did something wrong and you lost all your rankings, would you survive, right? So just think of the ethics of SEO and do the right things and don't be a dark waiter. Um, and certainly from an agency perspective, do not harm your clients. Always think of their brand as your brand. Okay, now I'm going to show a little trick in terms of featured snippets. Um, I'm hoping that you guys have heard, otherwise if you haven't, featured snippets is something that comes up on the top of the page. It's even better than pair number one ranking. Why? Because it's like at what I call position zero. So it's like you get the, you beat the number one player and in effect you're stealing their traffic as well. So you're leapfrogging your competitors and you're getting a massive number of clicks, traffic and conversions. So how, how do you do this? So if you look at this, um, Okay, I'm again going to go to Google and I'm going to type in say German companies in India. Now, what you see right up the top, this one, this is a featured snippet this part and it's overtaken position one right um, so this is what the featured snippet is is here I'll do another one um, Indian gems and jewelry maybe let's see yep okay there you go so as you can see over here again this is what's a featured snippet so Google has basically taken something from your web page and placed it right at the top um, and as you can see, in reality, this website, ibf.org, is not on position one. So in this case, this is a featured snippet, so you're on position zero. But even in the real ranking, uh, there is IGJ creation, which is at position one. There is India Mart number two, and IBF is at number three. So in effect, it's leapfrogged its competitors, and it's come to position zero, and it's taken most of the traffic. So how does Google do that? So basically, uh, we have done a lot of research around this. And what we have figured out is you need to answer questions like how, where, when, what, why. When you answer these questions, this is when Google shows up a featured snippet, right? And um, the pro trip over here that I would like to give is you would want to do a FAQ section on your page or do a Q&A uh, section on the page and that will help you get a featured snippet um, for your company or brand. Um, and I have uh, another wonderful tool that I want to show you. It's called Answer the Public, and I'll just show this to you in action. So if you go, here you go, I've put in Answer the Public, very cool graphic that comes up here as well. And let's say I type in boots as an example. And it will very quickly go and it will do some searches and it'll pull up a very interesting graph. And as you can see here, it's showing. So here it says, it says why, why boots are better than shoes? Uh, why do boots squeak, right? So, or if you wanted to see how related questions, so boots, how to draw boots, um, how to, how 
how to wear boots with jeans, right? So <clears throat> it's a very cool tool. It's called Answer the Public. Um, and again, as a content person um, or as an entrepreneur or as an SEO within your organization or a marketing manager, you can use tools like these to improve your website rankings by doing some really cool research. Back into our, I'm going to skip a couple of things because we are really running out of time. I want to go into vernacular content. So very quickly, um, I, I met Gary Ilias, who is the, uh, who I mentioned earlier, is one of the top guys in Google in terms of organic search. And he was uh, in Gurgaon in India, and I met him, and we were having a chat. So I know that he had tweeted, and he had said that, hey, only 10% of India's population speaks English. So why don't you do the other 90% a favor and create content around, around that? So, and he's tweeted this a couple of times already. So there's another tweet which you guys can read as well. And even when I did an interview with him, um, this is something he spoke about. So this is an opportunity for all you people out there that why are we only creating content in English? Let's go and create content in other languages. Um, and you will find that because you're creating content in another language, the competition is significantly lower and therefore you will be able to rank there much faster as well. Um, now, moving into uh, another point, this is around e-commerce SEO. So there, there's a common topic, and it's not just also about e-commerce SEO, but it's uh, blogs, et cetera, as well, anywhere where there's lots and lots of pages uh, around a particular theme, topic, et cetera. So um, in e-commerce SEO or in uh, places where there are lots of songs, which are collection of songs, et cetera, you will find that sites have implemented what's called lazy loading, which is um, they might have, say, a thousand blog articles. So instead of having one page, which is really long and you keep on scrolling, they will implement what's called lazy loading. So it'll only load the first part of the page, which might be maybe 10 of the blogs. And then when the user comes to the end of those 10, it will then go ahead and load the next 10. Now, what happens by doing that? They, they have improved the performance of the website because they have uh, sort of reduced the size of the page. But very importantly, from a Google perspective, it is unable to see any of the other pages. So guys, your, all your content which is on the other pages, you've made Google blind to that. Yes, there are advanced techniques on how you might be able to get around them, but the best way is pagination, right? Pagination is where you number, create a numbered sequence, which is uh, page number one of that topic, then page number two, page number three, and page number four, and so on. And each page could have, say, 10 articles or 20 articles, whatever the number may be. And you use what's called a rel equals previous and rel equals next command within your code. So note that down, uh, rel equals previous, rel equals next, and use that in conjunction with your pagination. And that's where Google allocates all the values of all those pages and you get great uh, value out of it. And Google is also able to see all the content that is there on your website. And as a pro tip on that, do not go and put what's called a canonical tag on the other pages like page two, page three, don't canonical it to page one. Um, then you are defeating the purpose of going through this exercise. So that's the e-commerce tip out there. Um, guys, digital marketing without be the best tools is like doing brain surgery with hammer. You really need tools and technology. I've shown a couple of them over here. Um, there is a lot more. There is Magistic, which we use for link around links, etc. There is SEM Rush, which is fantastic from a competition perspective. Uh, so you must use the tools. And not only that, you can also use Google, advanced Google commands to uh, make this really good. And uh, let me show you an advanced Google command. So as an example, let's say uh, I use want to use the site colon command, and I'll show that to you. So what this does is if I go to Google again, and let's say I was looking at site colon and let's say a website, Jabong. Okay, there we go. And you see there's about nine point, about 900,000 results roughly. Now let's say I wanted to see how many pages they have on their website which are related to shoes. 
So all I have to do is in front of the site colon command, I type in shoes. And now I have, there were about 260,000 pages that Google sees around shoes, right? If I wanted to see how many formal shoes they have, I can again just type this in again, site colon command with jabong.com. As you can see, no space in between them. And I do formal shoes. And they've got 107,000 pages around formal shoes, right? So this is fantastic from a competitive intelligent perspective. So if you wanted to find out how many pages on your competitor's website do they have around a particular topic, you can use the site colon command. You can make it much more specific. Let's say I wanted to see how many um, pages they have with shoes which they are using in their title. So I could combine two commands, site colon jamong.com, and then I can type in title and I'll say uh, running shoes. And there you have, you've got 15,000. So if you were a content marketer and you're a blogger and you want to, let's say you, you wanted to find out uh, guest posts. So what I could do is in title, I use the command in title and I say guest post, right? Um, and I see all these uh, websites out there um, that accepts, and I, I can use this to find out where the guest posts are. So I can see opportunities. I can make it more intensive and I can say um, something like marketing. So what will happen then is these will be more blogs around marketing, or I can say technology, right? So now I'll have guest posts around technology. Um, I can make it instead of in title, another command I can use is in URL, in URL colon, and I can say guest or submit. Sometimes people use submit post. So uh, that's something that happens uh, with Google, uh, which is you run into if you're doing a lot of searches on Google, Google will block you. So using uh, this command, uh, or uh, you know, if you do too many ranking checks, etc., you will run into this. So I'm going to come back um, into the presentation. So I've shown you um, some of the commands that you can use over here. These are fantastic from a, a competition perspective to find out how uh, you know you can do find out how much information there is uh, around your uh, competitors, and then you will know how much effort you need to put in to find out. Um, you know, content uh, or to make content which is in line with your competition. Um, all right, so uh, some tools uh, I had promised that, uh, you know, I'll show you some tools. Uh, so some of them I've demoed for you as well, uh, but here are some tools that you guys should really look at if you guys are serious about SEO. Majestic is fantastic from a link building perspective to find out link strengths of your competitors. Alexa is great to find out how important a website is in terms of traffic, et cetera. Um, Screaming Frog is a great crawler out there. Google gives some free tools in terms of keyword planning, um, page tools, etc. Um, SEM Rush, uh, fantastic from a perspective of competitor uh, intelligence. Uh, our own Bruce Clay tool set. Google Alerts is another fantastic one. It's free. You must put a Google alert for your brand. So you just go to google.com slash alerts and create an alert for your brand. And every time there's something about your brand, it will come to your inbox. And you can set this up for your competitors as well. So those are tools. And guys, these are, if you again, if you are really interested in search engine optimization, I've put together a list of uh, probably about 20 odd names over here. And these are people that I believe, if you're very serious about the organic search business, you must follow these people. Uh, they write blog posts, they do webinars, and they come up with some incredible stuff. There's so much learning. I follow them as well. Um, so, you know, these are people that I have put together over years, you know. Um, so please do uh, continue your learnings. And I must finish this off by saying that, look, SEO is a long-term game. Um, it's like you plant a seed. Then you have to water that seed, you have to nurture that seed, and then slowly it grows and becomes a tree, right? So similarly, SEO is not instant. Um, 
if you want instant results, go with paid search, go with advertising. SEO will take time. Um, if it's not a very competitive ca category um, and you have really something unique to offer, you know, you could start ranking very quickly a few months. But if it's anything which is even medium competition, you're talking six months, one year for a generic term. And if it's very competitive, you can be looking at one or two years to get, get into the first page of Google. I'm not even talking number one rank. Um, so it's a marathon. So be prepared for it. And the winning approach is always be partners. Be partners within your company because uh, your content team within your organization, your technology team, um, the IT, the finance, all of you need to work together. It is a partnership approach. And if you have an agency, then treat your agency as a partner, not as a vendor. You've brought them on for the expertise. Let them guide the process, right? Do not create roadblocks and hurdles. So whether it's internal or external, SU is a partnership. So um, that's about it from me. In case you do want to follow me on Twitter, I'm at Sidlal, S-I-D-L-A-L. I'm also available on LinkedIn. So that's it from my side. Thank you. Uh, over to you, Divya. Thank you so much, Siddharth. Um, we have got a very limited time left yet. Um, so I'll quickly launch out the poll for people who are actually interested in a digital marketing course. And we can take up a few questions. Siddharth, would you like me to take up or select any of those questions? Or Sure, let me just have a look uh, at the question while you're doing the polls. Sure. All right. All right. Okay, so I think I will... I will take up the questions because some of these uh, you might not be able to understand because they say, for example, one of the questions we have is from Vivek. They say, what is the full form of DYK? So DYK, uh, Vivek stands for did you know? Very simple. Um, another question we have is from Rohit Punjabi and he asks, how can we know about site architecture? Well, uh, Site architecture, one is, uh, you know, you can read up, go to our blog, uh, bruceclay.com, and over there, if you type in site architecture, also called siloing, you can read up about it. Um, or some of those resources I mentioned in my uh, last couple of slides, uh, you know, you can do site architecture with their name and try to see if they, if you come up with stuff. Uh, but And I've given you some basics around site architecture as well, right? Um, very, very important site architecture, okay? Um, Another question I have is from Satrajit Basu, and he asks, which tool is the best tool for keyword research? And will it give exact figures? Um, will it give exact figures for search volumes? Okay, that's a great question. So um, guys, there are lots and lots of tools out there which give you key keyword research information. So SEM Rush is one of them. Google AdWords through their keyword planner tool is another one. Um, there is Bing, there is Yahoo, etc. All of them have, there is, there is WordStream, there's a lot of them. Now the important thing to remember over here is most of these tools give you search volumes with them. But those search volumes are not real figures. Just remember that. So the way to use them is pick one tool. Do not compare two tools because if you compare two tools, the search volumes will be different, right? And you won't know which one to use. So just pick one tool. I generally tend to use Google Keyword Planner, right? And whatever search volumes it gives, I just look at it as a ratio with the other keywords I'm looking at. So if shoes, uh, Bata shoes as an example, has a 100,000 searches, and uh, Bata shoes formal has 5,000 searches, I'm looking at that as a ratio, right? So that's how you have to look at it, which, which keyword is good, and then you have to see, does that match with your persona of the user that you're targeting? Um, okay, so I hope that answers Satrajit's question around, uh, okay, now next question I have is, this helps us find relevant keywords, yes, absolutely. Uh, what about content near image? Yes, you need to have content near image, it will further add value to it, but the number one thing over there would be your alt, alt attribute, alt tag, that needs to be there. The second one I would go with is your file name and um, image size. And then I would make sure that I insert the image near the content that's relevant. 
okay next question i have is should the images have names relevant to the content of the product or service or should it be as part of the context of image displayed all right so the image now this is very important <clears throat> what people tend to do is they tend to and especially seos they tend to go and use an image and use it as a place where they can keyword stuff a keyword within that image completely wrong guys as an example if this is the image you're currently seeing on your screen which is the india gate and fireworks uh, but my talk is about seo i cannot uh, uh, an seo uh, uh, person will say okay i'll go and use in the image i'll attribute i'll use seo that's wrong this image is not about seo you think if you were the blind person what is it that this image is about so this image the right alt attribute for this alt tag would be india gate image with fireworks in the background that's what the image is about you have to describe the image and you're not supposed to keyword stuff it keywords can come if they are relevant to the image um okay so if <clears throat> next question i have is from sapta sapta pranani das and she asks if i link too much links won't it slow down my website um absolutely if you've got lots of links that is a contributing factor but i am more importantly looking at it from a perspective of the link juice how much link juice do i have and very importantly am i linking to the right parts of my web page right so vikram tyagi asks what do we mean by links okay i i wish i could answer that because this is a really really long answer for this the simplest way is a link is when you click on something and you go from one website to another or from one web page to another within a website that's a link so when you go to, uh, from one web page to another within a website that's called an internal link and when you go from one website to another website that's called an external link um so i hope that i uh, that i've answered that um next question is from pushpa and she asks if i get backlinks from other website and it has more domain uh, authority than 70 will my website get some value from the site and also is it any possibility of increasing domain authority of my website all right uh, great question pushpa um so domain authority uh, is a measure used by the tool called moz um it's not a google measurement google has does not even look at that but yeah if you're looking at that as the tool that you're uh, using great um and yeah a uh, domain authority of 70 is a good uh, domain authority to have um and my measure of whether i should take a link from there would be is it in my theme that is does that website have any kind of value to my audience if that is correct then certainly i would take that and yes it would help me increase my own because any time a website links to you it increases your own uh, if you want to call it in this particular case domain authority yes it will increase your domain authority um can you let us know the tools so this is hemant he asked can you let us know the tools used to you see the attributes all right all i did over there was i uh, i was in google chrome and i uh, clicked on the image and i right clicked it or rather i right clicked the image and used inspect element so i right clicked the image and used image element and that's what i used Next question I have is from Shilpa. She asks, "Is posting the same blog on two different sites is that content duplication and can I be penalized?" All right, absolutely. If you post the same blog on two different sites, that is absolutely content duplication, right? You will get no value from it at all. So you should only be posting one blog in one unique website, and that's about it. And now. Um, actually there is no penalty it's called a filter so that's a duplicate content filter that will happen and what it means is that second uh, piece of content will be of no value so there's uh, you should only go and post it on one website um all right thank you so much for that awesome session thank you sheena thank you very insightful just trying to see if i can see any more questions here Okay next question is from Dipen he asks how do we know when google releases an algorithm okay 
So Dipen, I'm assuming you are asking vendors, uh, how do we know when Google updates its algorithm? All right. The reality is, is that Google updates its algorithm about uh, 800 times a year, which is it's doing tweaks to its algorithm. Google updates their algorithm in a major way, maybe three to five times a year, right? And when it does that, once in a while, it will actually come out and say, hey, we have updated the algorithm. And they will make a public announcement around it. And they will maybe even tell you what is the major tweak they did. So for example, when they did the Google Penguin update and they said that was pointing towards uh, you know, cleaning up sites that had bad quality links, or when they did the Google Panda update, where they talked about quality of the content and they cleaned up websites which were you know low quality content um, or they did the google page layout algorithm which is the update where if there were too many uh, ads on the top of the page so it was too uh, too ad centric on the top uh, they lowered the value of that so those are all major google algorithm updates the other way to find out if a google algorithm has affected your website is you could uh, there are some websites out there which sort of track uh, one is the Google announcements itself. Second is you can also check even when there's no major Google announcement, uh, Danny Sullivan, uh, and he uses the Twitter uh, handle at search liaison. And if you follow him, he will once in a while confirm if there's been a Google update, which is major. Um, so those are different ways. And then there'll be a lot of chatter. And um, that's how you will come to know about whether Google has done an algorithm up update. Um, next question is from Sunil Sharma. He says, um, my website is pretty new and I went to SEM Rush. It didn't show anything what to do. Okay, uh, there are many ways you can use SEM Rush. Um, one of the ways is I could go into SEM Rush and even if my own website is new, right, and it does not show much information, that's because you, you're probably not ranking for anything as yet but who are the competitors in your field? So what I would do is instead of using my own website, I would go into SEM Rush and type my competitor's name, someone who is well established. And then uh, SEM Rush will tell me all the keywords they are ranking for, what are their URLs, what are their rankings? And that's a treasure trove of information. I can then take that information and use that for my competitive intelligence analysis and find out, okay, uh, my competitor has got uh, is ranking and this is the kind of traffic that they are getting for it because then you can map it against your search volume on a particular keyword and you can say okay I'm getting x number of searches or rather not I am my competitor is getting x number of searches and that's leading to y traffic into their website let me go and create a page around it so that's what how you would use the tool <coughs> okay next question is from Vani Malhotra and she asks how can we check our website ranking? All right, um, many ways you can do this. One is you can just go simply to Google and you can type the keyword. So for example, if I was to, let me see if I can do it right now. So here, oh, I had been blocked by Google, so I might not be able to do it. Okay, it allows me, all right, great, all right. So uh, Vani, if I had to do a ranking check, the way I would do it is whatever is the keyword I want to see, I would type it over here and uh, say, is, let's say I'm typing running shoes and let's say my website is um, Adidas as an example, right? So all I would do is I would scroll down here. Now the first ones which say ads, you will never take them into account. And the first position is to Amazon, second to Flipkart, third to Snapdeal so on, and I'm just looking for Adidas, and they're not on page one. So what you're seeing is an ad for Adidas, but they're not on page one. So we are not in the first 10. And there they are. So they are at number 13, but that's Adidas UK. So even though I'm in the Google India database, which is google.co.in, it's the wrong Adidas that's ranking, but that too at number 13. So that's how you would do a check for your own website rankings, but if you had lots of, so this is fine when you just had one or two keywords. What if you had lots of keywords? So if you had lots of keywords, you could go into say a tool like ours or SEM Rush also does this and you could run a ranking report, right? So for example, in this particular case, I've just opened this up for you. You can see um, 
I have not only put, say, a client website, but I've also put a few competitors and I've put a lot of keywords and it's showing me where each domain is and what is their ranking. So you could use tools and SEM Rush would do the same thing for you as well, right? So um, say I'm in SEM Rush now, I've just opened up SEM Rush and let's say I'm in, uh, my website is Jabong as an example, right? So jabong.com, I just go and I click search and up come, up come the results. And that's why you see uh, in SEO, you can see so much of information about your own website and that of your competitors that people don't realize it. Everything is there. You can right click the website and you'll see all their source code. So now here, here I am and I'm seeing that in organic search and I can click on view full report. So the top competitors, for example, Mintra is a top competitor for Jabong. That's correct. Shoppers top, Woonik, Coops, Lime Road, right? Um, and what are the kind of keywords that are driving traffic to Jabong? So I click on view full report over here. So Vani, I hope you're watching this. Um, and as this opens up, just give it about five seconds. And the kind of information I'll get is tremendous. So as you can see over here, it's showing me that for men's fashion, uh, Jabong is ranking ninth, and the search volume for that particular keyword is about 18,000 searches a month, right? It's also showing me which URL is ranking on Jabong for that. Or if I was a competitor for Jabong, so let's say I'm Coops, I could be seeing all this information about my competitor, and I would know that, okay, what particular keyword do I need to track, rank, et cetera, et cetera. All right. Um, next question is, from Lovleen Gajaria. And Lovleen asks, what is the best approach for a B2B business startup? Currently, website is in creation phase, so we haven't tested much. All right, Lovleen, you have a very long way ahead of you. Um, you would need to, uh, so best approach for a B2B startup, uh, I'm really in the blind out here because what kind of a startup is it? What is it doing? So, you know, again, best approach, Go into Google, type your competitor's name, find use the site colon command and find out how much, how many pages of information your top competitors have. And that becomes a beginning point for you in terms of how much content needs to be created. You can use the SEM rush tool as well to find out more information, etc. cetera. Um, next question I have is, I do SEO, this is Tarundeep Singh. And Tarun asks, I do SEO for the last six to eight months. Most of the pages are second page. What, what do we need to do to get to the first position? All right, very simple. <laughs> if you want to get to the first page, you would need to uh, ensure that you've got great content. Um, and again, like I, like I showed you, you could use site colon command to find out how much content is there on your competitor websites that are ranking and uh, then create similar content. Um, it could be that you have got one page of content, but your competitors have 10 pages of content around a similar topic, in which case, you know, you have to go and create X number of pages of content. Um, I don't know whether you're using the correct title, description, keyword tags, etc. So you would want to go and fix your tags on page elements. Uh, look at your page speed. So those are all kind of things you would want to be doing. So if you're already on page two, the good news for you is if you're already on page two, you are very, very close to getting lots of traffic from page one. So unfortunately on page two, you're not getting much traffic at all, but it's very good that you're on page two because that means very soon you'll start getting a whole heap of traffic. Okay. Um, next question, Rashid, wonderful lecture, lots of insights for future thoughts. Lecture was made and uh, we'll prepare and have you now. Probably the whole next two weeks will go into researching on the talk just given. Thank you very much. That, okay, so that's not a question. Thank, but anyway, thank you, Rashid. Um, okay, next question is from attendee six, and attendee six asks how to rank only one or two keywords. Who? How to rank on only one or two keywords? Well, you need to have that keyword present on the page. You need to use it in your title description. You need to use it in the content of the page. Uh, you need to get other websites, if possible, to link to you. Uh, a few of them with links to your particular, with your anchor text, which is rich for your particular keyword that you want to rank for. Um, 
they must be from the same team within your website. You need to make sure your site architecture is good. Um, it's well well researched. So yeah, that's that's how I would get to you know rank for one or two keywords. And by the way, you only want to rank for one or two keywords on one page. It's really not possible to rank for totally different keywords on the same page because uh, the way Google looks at your page, there's a particular theme. So that's what you have to do. Okay. Next question I have is from Somil Khare. And Somil asks, what are the sources to stay updated with the trends in digital marketing? All right. Somil, I think I, I covered uh, quite a few of them. So uh, if, if I had to talk about actual uh, websites, I would say uh, use Search Engine Land. Uh, they are very good. Search Engine Watch, Search Engine Journal, SEO Book, uh, our own blog, bruceclay.com slash blog. Um, uh, those are just some of the sources that I would say are good. And otherwise, if you go to that list of uh, people that I had mentioned, uh, which I'll also try to bring up here. So it's again back on the screen. I've just done that. So um, if you, uh, Neil Patel, he's another uh, guy who's got a really good blog and you can get a lot of information from there. Uh, Ross, Ross Hudgens. Oh, uh, the one of the most important ones I forgot Google webmasters guys you must on YouTube there's an entire series uh, Google webmasters and John Mueller tends to take that or uh, Mahe Ohe uh, tends to take that there's quite a few of them but Google webmasters is a channel you must subscribe on YouTube and they have a blog which you must read so that hopefully answers your question Somil next one Varunas I am confused with SEM rush features. Can you clear that? Okay. Look, SEM rush has lots and lots of, and I'll go back there for a minute. Um, so I'm back in SEM rush now. SEM rush has lots and lots of features. Um, and really, I wouldn't be able to cover it over here and I wouldn't do justice even. Uh, my suggestion would be um, they have lots of tutorials. Uh, go to, uh, say, Google, YouTube, or something and type in SEM rush tutorials and you'll see a whole heap of them. There is just so much information out there that you can do. You can do competitive intelligence analysis. You can analyze your own domain. You can look at subdomains. That's it. Um, next question. What is uh, the best tool for client reporting asked by Vinod? Okay. So Vinod, uh, from a client reporting perspective, um, Again, there are lots and lots of tools out there. Uh, one of them, if you if you don't want to spend any money, then my suggestion would be using Google Sheets. So uh, you can automate a lot of stuff in there and you can create reporting from Google Sheets and go to YouTube and type in Google Sheets and uh, client reporting and you'll come up with a few videos. Um, another one is if you don't even want to get there, then just do manual Excel reporting. And otherwise, again, if you just type in client reporting, SEO client reporting, you'll come up with a few. In our case, for example, we have our own tool called the Bruce Clay SEO tool set. You can use that as well. Next question I have is from Sunil Sharma. Um, Sunil asks, how to see competitor bank links? Okay, fantastic. I'll show you another tool which we didn't get a chance to look at. Now, I've just clicked on it. It's called Majestic, right? Majestic is a fantastic tool. And by the way, there are many alternatives to it as well. There is Ahrefs, there is Moz, right? I prefer to use Majestic, so I'm going to use this one. So this is how I would see my competitor backlink. So example, again, let's assume I am Jabong, right? Uh, or rather, I'm Mintra or one of the competitors. And I want to see the backlinks of my competitor because that's what you're asking me. I just type in over here the competitor domain name. So in this case, we've used Jabong. And I click Search. And within a few seconds, it comes up with this fantastic graph. There you go. Now, what it's done is at this point of time, it's shown me two, two statistics which are very important, right? On the left, it's showing me what's called trust flow. And on the right, it's called citation flow, right? Both of them are on a score of 0 to 100. So citation flow of 39 out of 100 and trust flow 22 out of 100. These are both fairly low, right? And you can even compare them. 
against your competitor. So um, let's say I wanted to do a competitive uh, intelligence analysis. So I'll go, there's another tool over here which says compare domains and I click summary. And as you can see, it allows me now. So I'll just go here. I'll type in say jabong.com. I'll type in coops.com, maybe Mintra, Flipkart, and Snapdeal, right? And I'll click enter, boom. Few seconds later, I have all this fantastic information that's come up. So now you can see you're comparing all these top guys. And that's why, again, I say that, you know, on the internet, everyone can see everything. So even without that website's permission, I can see all this information. And Flipkart has a trust score of 60, and it's way ahead of the pack, as you can see over here where my mouse is, right? And on a citation flow level also, it's leading Flipkart with 64. It's also showing me all the domains. So now, again, if I was a competitor, so let's say I wanted to, uh, Jabong is my competitor and I want to look at it. So I can click on the referring domains here and it will show me all the domains that are linking back to Jabong. So as you can see over here, it's just about to open up. Might take a few seconds. It's still loading, guys, so bear with me. All right. Normally, it loads up pretty quickly, and what I would get is a whole heap of competitor information in terms of where are all the links uh, that the site is getting from. So. In this case, it's for some reason it's stuck. Yeah, but you get the gist of it. So come to Majestic and you'll be able to see um, all the information around the domain. So as you can see over here, it's showing me a graph. It's showing me what are the uh, referring domains. When did I get these uh, domains? What are the anchor texts being used to link to these domains? There's a whole heap of information. Okay. Um, next question, if you're a startup, what kind of budget you should set for SEO? Okay, how long is a piece of string? Again, I can't give you an answer because it purely comes down to your industry and your category. If you're manufacturing something unique and it's, uh, you know, you don't have too many competitors, then um, your budget would be fairly low and you might get away with, you know, uh, I don't know, spending 30, 40, 50,000 rupees a month uh, towards search engine optimization. But on the other hand, if you are in a very competitive space, um, then A, you would have to invest a lot more, but more importantly, you would have to invest for a fairly long period of time before you actually start seeing results. Um, does contextual backlinks, so Nikhil Patel asked, does contextual backlinks help in SEO? Um, yes, uh, contextual backlinks is what it should be about, but also just be very careful, um, especially if people go out and buy links, that's when they get very high uh, keyword relevant uh, backlinks, and those can come back and harm you. So you want to be very careful about that. Next question is from Usha. Usha asks, how much content per page of a website is good? with respect to number of words? Should it be 500 words, 800 words, or 1,000 words? Okay. Um, research has been showing that the longer the page in terms of content, the better it is. So uh, there's been a lot of research which shows that 1,000 words and 2,000 word content will lead to uh, great uh, uh, rankings for your website. But very importantly, it does not mean you go out and write fluff. You have to write great content. It must be uh, well researched. You know that's when it matters. If if you can only write 800 words of well researched information, then do 800 words of content, right? Um, now also it matters. Are you a e-commerce website 
or are you a content website like as an information website because if you're an information website then generally the content will be a lot longer and whereas if you're an e-commerce website the content will be much shorter you might only have 200 or 300 words on that page so you know the industry would matter the way i would look at it is i would go into whichever industry i am and i would type it into google and i would see the top 10 results and see what kind of content is there on the page um, and just by the way our tool does that for us so if you go into the Bruce Gray tool set, it actually shows you how much content, but otherwise you can physically just go in and map it out. Um, next question from again from Musha and she asks, how many heading tags is good? Uh, so H1, H2, H3. Okay. So the general rule of thumb is on each page, you will only have one heading H1 tag, which is the H1, right? Because that's your main heading. Below that, you can have multiple H2 or H3 tags, right? Um, and that's how, think of a report, how, how you write a report. It would have one main heading and then a few subheadings through the page. That's exactly how you would do it on, uh, on, on your website as well. Now, where people make mistakes is the web designer or developer, they tend to use the H1, H2, H3 tags to control the size of the font. So they are a bit lazy and what they tend to do is they say, okay, H1 defines it's a big font and H2 is slightly smaller and H3 is slightly smaller. And that's what they do. That's the wrong approach. In fact, completely wrong approach. It destroys the theme of your website. Instead, what you have to do is your web designer, you need to go back to them and say, hey, no, you cannot use the um, H1, H2, H3 to control the size of the font. Rather, you have to use what's called CSS, right? Cascading style sheets in order to control that. And H1 should only be reserved for the actual theme of your page. H2 should be the subheading on your page. That's how you would use it. So one H1 on a page and multiple H2s and H3s if required. The only exception is the home page where you can have multiple H1s. Um, question I have uh, is from, uh, does meta keyword tag matter nowadays to search engine? Okay, the meta keywords tag stopped being used by Google about uh, 10 years ago and maybe even more. That's when they made the announcement in about uh, September 2009, if I remember correctly, is when they, start, they made the announcement that they no longer use the keyword tag and they said that they've not been using it for a while. Um, having said that, uh, Google and other search engines have also said that if you have misspelling, put that into the meta keywords tag, right? So what I would do is I would just put a few keywords in the meta keyword tag um, and just a few of them, right? Especially synonyms and misspellings. And that's about it. I would not spend too much time at, on it at all, right? So since I'm already on the page, I'm already writing the titles, descriptions, et cetera, it would take me literally five minutes to add a, key, a meta keyword tag. So I might just do that, okay? Um, now, Nan Kishore has a question, but I'm trying to find it because he's saying, I've asked it the second time, but They're literally, uh, Nanda, I'm sorry, but there's literally, I don't know, there must be a few hundred questions here. So uh, I can't see it. Uh, all right, next question is from Satrajit Basu, and he says, I'm seeing all search volume in keyword planner in ranges. What to do see, uh, to see figures and not ranges? Okay, um, this is something that Google has sort of implemented. Uh, what they have done is, Initially, it used to be completely free and you could see all the figures. Now, you must have a, a keyword planner tool account and you must be spending money on it. And generally, when you spend a good amount of money is then when you can actually see the actual figures. Now, having said that, you might want to use a tool like uh, SEM Rush, which will also give you those figures that you're looking for, the search volumes. Uh, Uber suggests from Neil Patel, uh, like, Uber suggests used to be an individual tool on its own, um, and now um, it redirects to Neil Patel. And if you see over there, I've just pulled that up on my screen now, and you can use this. So type in a keyword, for example, over here, uh, say career guidance as an example, right? And I click look up. And as you can see on the screen, there you go. So it's giving me a search volume of 1600. 
right? And it's also giving me all these other uh, keywords with their search volumes. So uh, yeah, Uber suggests is the tool that you could use if Google Keyword Planner is not working for you, right? Um, okay, how to find penalized links is a question being asked asked by Chandan. Right. All right, Chandan. Uh, how to find penalized links? Uh, Google does not tell you what are the penalized links. You need to figure that out yourself. So you have to figure out: is it a low low value link? If it's a low value link, you need to do what's called a disavow, right? You need to tell Google that, hey, this is not a, a link that you value. Um, and so what is a low value tool? A low value, uh, or rather, what is a low value link? A lo low value link is something where uh, that link is not uh, relevant to your theme of your website. It is not a website which is well kept. It is not a website that has much traffic or even and this is the biggest signal. If you go to Google and you type that website in and Google does not give that website itself, boom. That means that Google themselves is not uh, valuing that website, so you should at least not be valuing it either. So that's how you would find your, and to find your own penalized link, so you would just go, to, go through all your links and you would start checking them out, like I said, like I showed you just now. Um, and another place to find links is in Google Webmaster Tools. So, uh, and sorry, it's been updated. Google calls it now Google Search Console. So in Google Search Console, you can see all your uh, links as well, or part of them. Google only shows a small part of it. Thank you so much for actually taking your time out, Siddharth, and taking up all the questions. We have got like so many questions today, and you actually responded to more than half of these. And thank you taking for, it, for your uh, time out for this session and leading us through such a great, well demonstrated presentation and exploring the tools for us. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. And Thank you, audience. Cheers. Thank you, everyone, for attending Bye. this session and being a part for today's session. See you some other day with another webinar. Thank you so much. Have a great weekend, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Just before leaving the session, everyone just put in your poll regarding how was your experience for today's webinar.